Hello and welcome to the session on the Blackboard AI Design Assistant. Uh, my name is Stephanie Richter. I'm the Director of Teaching Excellence and Support in the Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning at Northern Illinois University. And I'm really glad that you are here. Today's session is going to be a little more informal because we're going to focus a lot on a live demo of the AI Design Assistant. Uh, Please bear with me as that does sometimes take a little bit of time while we wait for the AI to process. It would be a lot quicker and a lot smoother if I just gave you some screenshots, but I think a lot less meaningful as well. Uh, as we progress today, please feel free to follow along in your own courses. Uh, I would recommend not doing this in a live course. Uh, if you <laughs> happen to have an older course, please feel free to start there. Or uh, the other thing I can show you quickly is how to request a new shell so that if you wanted to try this in a blank shell, you could do that there instead of doing it in your live course. So let's start there. For those of you who are uh, watching live or the recording and you're from NIU, let's quickly go through how to request a new shell in Blackboard. So I've gone to our our Blackboard homepage, webcourses.niu.edu, if you want to go directly. Your page will look a little bit different than mine. I have some um, admin components here that you won't have, but that's okay. To request a course, or to really to request a shell, which is what we want right now, go to the Tools tab, and then go to Blackboard Faculty Tools. And then on the Blackboard Faculty Tools page, which will open in a new tab. You'll go to My Shells and request a new shell. You'll see any shells you already have will be listed here. Again, that just takes a moment to load, but we can request a new one. You can request a course, a shell rather, for any course that you would like, one that you have been teaching or one that you would like to teach and then um, we can choose from the drop down here. I'm going to just choose for my go to is University 999 as sort of a generic course, but you can use one that you're actively currently teaching or one that you have taught before or you anticipate you'll be teaching. When you click submit, they'll just take a moment to be created. Uh, and once it's created, you can access it from your courses page. This whole process is optional, but I wanted to start here so that if you wanted to have a blank sandbox space to play around with, you could request one now and um, be ready to go when we get to uh, trying out some of those capabilities. Everyone good for right now? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Awesome. Great. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so let me go back to the AI Design Assistant web page because I want to show you how to uh, some of the capabilities and talk about that more generally. I'll put the link here in the chat for any of you who would like to go directly to that page as well. So the AI Design Assistant in Blackboard is about a year old now. Actually, we've had the capability for uh, a fair amount of time available. Here at NIU, we did some testing and some focus groups in the fall of 23, and then we enabled it for a pilot in the spring of 24. So you may have been a part of the pilot, in which case you may have tried out some of these capabilities already, uh, but we didn't enable it to all faculty until the beginning of August. And we did that because we wanted to be really thoughtful and deliberate about enabling artificial intelligence capabilities for uh, our learning management system in Blackboard because of the, the student data it would have access to, because of the implications for faculty using AI with their students. We just wanted to be sure that as a university, we were being really thoughtful and deliberate. So to get started here, I want to talk about uh, Blackboard and how they got to this point with AI as well. So if you're on this page, 
one of the first links you'll see is for Anthology's trustworthy AI approach. And I'll put this link in the chat as well. One of the aspects of this that made us uh, more comfortable with enabling the AI design assistant is that Anthology, which is the company that owns Blackboard, has been really thoughtful and transparent about how they are promoting AI as well. So here on this untrustworthy AI approach, I encourage you to read through Anthology's perspective and philosophy of AI. But in particular, I want to highlight the AI principles here at the bottom. So for example, uh, there are seven key principles of trustworthy AI that Anthology has put into place for oversight of their any AI capabilities that they generate, as well as how they are using the data that we provide to them. Uh, a couple of my, I think the ones that are most important include this humans in control. So in order for anything via AI to be placed in your course, you make a conscious decision to do that. You both enable the AI tool and you review and accept and potentially modify anything that the AI has generated. You are in control of that process and you have transparency and oversight into what the AI has created or generated. Um, the other tool that I really want to highlight is uh, the privacy, safety, and security, privacy, security, and safety, I suppose, uh, principle here. When we work with the, with generative AI in general, the privacy and security of those systems can be labyrinthine, quite frankly. It can be really complex and difficult to untangle. Anthology and Blackboard are promising that when we use their AI systems, our data and our input is not being used to further train AI. It's not being used uh, to uh, be captured or repurposed. It is being maintained confidentially, uh, which is an important part of the privacy and the security of these systems. And for uh, should any of our students have direct access for their safety in how they're using any AI powered tools. Uh, you can read more about the broader trustworthy AI program here, uh, but those are the, some of the principles that I think are most important for our consideration when we are selecting or using any generative AI tool. So I wanted to highlight that as well as part of the process of choosing a tool or getting started with one is thinking about the privacy, safety, security, and the ethical implications for using artificial intelligence either in your teaching or with your students. Coming back to the AI design assistant, let's go over at the high level some of the capabilities that we'll see with the AI design assistant. So the tool has evolved since it was first released. And I could actually, if we have time today, preview a new feature that isn't available at NIU yet. Uh, but these are the tools that are currently available. So we can use the AI design assistant in Blackboard to add images to our course, either by recommending uh, royalty-free images that were created by people, by humans, and are part of a royalty-free library, or by generating brand new images created by AI that we can use within learning modules and with a few other places in our courses. The AI Design Assistant has a lot of capabilities related to assessments, uh, not to grading, not yet, uh, maybe not ever, but for how you generate or set up your assessments. So it can propose test questions. It can suggest prompts for assignments, for discussions, or for journals. These prompts are designed to be authentic and can be generated aligned with specific uh, cognitive levels from Bloom's taxonomy. They're also designed so that it is more difficult for students to rely entirely on generative AI to complete those assignment prompts. 
which I do think is a little bit funny that we're using AI to create assignments that students can't use AI on, but um, it can be a quicker way to generate that, that description or the instructions that you're looking for for your assignment. For assignments as well, the generative AI design assistant can generate a rubric. So you can use this rubric on an assignment to grade your students' submissions. You can also use it as kind of a, I don't know, a, a way to evaluate your assignment instructions. Because if you've written the assignment instructions and you generate an AI rubric and that rubric looks nothing like what you were looking to use, um, then your assignment instructions probably aren't clear or are confusing in some way. And you can go back and revise those. So you can use that rubric as almost a way to validate your assignment instructions. The AI design assistant can also suggest learning modules for your course. So based on specific learning objectives or based on your syllabus or a list of topics or just the name of your course, the AI design assistant can generate and suggest a list of modules you might include in your course. That list might include the, the modules, names, the images that go along with those modules, and a description for those modules. The AI Design Assistant can build content based on specific context of your course. So you can ask for a, those learning modules to be based on a specific um, file that's in your course, for example. And brand new, you can ask the AI design assistant to generate link, generate your um, the content that it generates to be in a specific language. By default, because our overall Blackboard system uses English as its language, it will generate English, but you can specify a different language if you would prefer for the output of your course materials. We'll talk about a few of the other pieces on this page once we get into the AI Design Assistant, but I want to get started with, uh, let me find, that's not this one, I need the next tab, here. Uh, we're going to start with this course that I have created, and we're going to jump right into some of the capabilities of the AI Design Assistant. So this is a generic introduction to art kind of a course. Um, this is built off of a, a Creative Commons open education resource course. So this is not reflective of anything here at NIU, um, but it is a content that was created to be a course. And I want to start with the image capabilities of the AI Design Assistant. So this course happens to have an image already for the course banner, but let's change that and use the AI Design Assistant to, to do so. So I'm going to edit the course image. I clicked the pencil icon here. If you don't have an image in your course, you would go to the Details and Actions panel and choose Edit Display Settings under Course Image. And then I'll click the image icon to choose an image from for my course image. I could, of course, upload something from my computer, but instead I want to go look at Unsplash. Now, what Unsplash is going to do, what the AI Design Assistant is going to do, is very small in this case. It used the context of my course to think that to decide that my banner probably should be related to art and design. It did so based primarily on the course title, and so instead of coming into an empty search uh, results. It gave me a recommended search term and I can choose from some of the images that it found. If I wanted to change that search term, I could, but it's pre-filling in that search. I'm going to choose the pencils here, kind of like those, and I'll position this kind of like that. And now I'll have a new course image. So as quickly as that, with a few seconds, I can find a new image to use for my course. 
Now that's obviously a time saving over going and finding an image somewhere on the web. These are those images you find are all pre licensed. They're royalty free, meaning you can use that in your course without violating copyright in any way, uh, which is much easier than trying to find those same types of images just generally on the web. But the other image capability is a little more impressive. Uh, I have a module that has a thumbnail image for my module one, but my module two doesn't have an image yet. So I'm going to edit my module two so that I can add an image. Down here at the bottom of the page is where the image for that module exists. I'm going to add an image and this time I have three choices. I could upload my own image if I had one. I could find a stock image from Unsplash. Again, it would pre-fill in the search term based on the uh, description and title of that module. I can also ask it to generate images. So here it's going to generate some images based on the same context, the title and the description of my module. We'll wait to see what it generates. Um, based on that, if I like any of the images, I could use one or I could describe a different image and ask it to create something different. This is where I mentioned we do need to exercise some patience in order to uh, give the AI time to work. So if I liked any of these, I could choose one. If I didn't, I could describe something different. So let's make it a painting hanging in a museum is what I would like to use for this. We'll see what it comes up with. Again, we wait. It's amazing to, to think the <laughs> differences in expectations of like waiting for something like this to uh, generate, um, take some time, whereas creating these images would take so much more time. And yet waiting seems to take forever. Now you'll notice some um, quality issues, I would say, with the images. For example, uh, this in the upper right says, uh, create awa der wing. It's attempting to create to image of text and that text is clearly wrong. Um, similarly down here in the lower left, it's created some text on a wall that is clearly inaccurate. Um, it's not, sometimes they're not even letters. So that's not great, but I could choose one of the other two here if I liked those. Uh, I saw someone had their hand raised. Do you want to ask a yeah, question, it, make a it, comment? Sorry, Stephanie, to interrupt you yeah, already. No, please. Uh, it's just that um, I'm not sure if I missed it, but I'm trying mm -hmm. to follow you on my on the shell that I created. I don't have access mm -hmm. to that menu of the images. Is that normal? Am I supposed to have access to that or should I restart? Thank you. Uh, you should if you've created, did you have a module created already? I have a module created. Yep, module one, okay. and it goes back to the old one. Like, mod and I, I went to module two to go with you, and it just basically mm -hmm. said the visible to students or invisible, and then the description. But I don't, I don't see the menu under the description that you that you're seeing. You don't have the advance and sequence or the image. That's right. No. Interesting. Okay, uh, I may need to follow up with you afterwards because I don't know why that wouldn't appear for you if it's a shell that you just created. Um, you might try refreshing if All the right. if the Makes shell sense. wasn't let maybe me... like fully baked, I guess. Which yeah, is a yeah. Weird thing to let think, me but... close and reopen uh, okay. Blackboard. So thank you and sorry, Stephanie. I just wanted no. because I'm following you and trying to read my images. But yeah, I'll show. That's quite all right. Please do interrupt. Um, let me go back to since I closed out my my images. Let's see what it generates this time. It should generate new images. While it happens, Chi Chen, did you want to ask something? Yeah, um, I I have modules in my course, and then I mm -hmm. try to have AI to generate images, and I put in accounting information systems, but they give me some like picked a photograph or pictures of trees. I mean, is that the prompt is not good enough? <laughs> I I don't see the relevance of trees, the sky, you know, and mm -hmm. with the accounting information systems. Nope, I don't either. I would say try 
um, writing something a little more descriptive. So for example, you have accounting information systems. Do you think about what you might want to see? Do you want to see a person using a computer? Do you want to see uh, something that looks like a network diagram, mm -hmm. computers connected to one another? Uh, I, would, I would think about what the visual is that you want to see and try to describe that a little more concretely um, that might get you something that's a little bit more what you're looking for. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, prompting is is a whole science now at this point. Um, if you'd like some pointers on, on prompt writing, uh, I would recommend we have a workshop coming up later in September called Welcome to AI, where we'll walk you through using an AI system, not the Blackboard AI Design Assistant, but using one of the, the chat um, format for AI directly. And we'll talk more about prompt writing then, but for in general for writing a prompt, I recommend including the the task that you know for something that's more chat focused than this. Usually it's task, what you want the AI to accomplish, the role, what uh, perspective the AI should be taking, like who they're writing as, uh, the uh, the format that you want it in, do you, are you looking for an image, are you looking for a bulleted list, are you looking for a flyer, uh, and any other context. In this case for an image, there's a, actually a separate set of criteria for prompting for image generation that uh, I know Adobe has been championing, where you might write about the, the subject, you might write about the style of the image, and any other context like um, how you want the image framed, that sort of thing. You can put a lot of detail into that. In this case, I, I wanted to see paintings hanging in a museum and I didn't give it a lot of additional context. And so that's kind of what it gave me. I wish there was a way, I have not tried just saying like, do not include text <laughs> to see if it would not include text because the text so far has not been really helpful. Um, I'm going to use this one. No, I'm going to use the one at the lower left. I like the way that building looks as my image this time. When I choose the image, I can reframe it slightly. So for example, if I wanted to zoom in, I can zoom in, I can reframe this so it's a little more centered and save the image. It's also worth noting if the image that you use is going to convey content in any way, you should uncheck the mark image as descriptive and write some alternative text. In this case, I am just using it as a decorative element to add some visual interest to the page, so I'm okay leaving it marked as decorative. And then when I save, I'll have the uh, image here uh, in my module. So I can do that for each of my modules, or uh, I have a shortcut for that too. I'm gonna switch courses for just a second because I, nope, I don't have them in here anymore, do I? Uh, I had a, a set of objectives I was hoping I would find, but that's okay. Um, let me go back to my courses and find that UNIV shell that I created. take this that's probably the other one I'm looking for a blank shell is what I wanted that one's still old we definitely don't want that one we'll take this one this one's blank so when I have a completely blank course uh, I can give it a name for this example I like using um, United States history after the Civil War that gives a time frame. We have a course very similar to this here at NIU, um, and it's specific about what the content is enough that I can kind of do this without any prep. So I'm using the auto, let me come back for a second. I'm using this auto generate modules button to see what it will generate for me when I don't have any other text here in that image. So this is just looking at um, the title of the course, looking at US history after um, the 
Civil War. So here with that, the only context for the course, it's generated a number of modules, I, uh, along with, by the way, a title for the module, an image, and a description. If I had course objectives for the course, I could put those into the description, or if I had a list of the topics, etc., I, I could put those in and have AI generate according to um, those expectations. By default, it's going to give me titles that are just the title. If I wanted those to include, for example, week one, module one, etc., I could choose a prefix. So I'll add a prefix. If I wanted to include images or not, I could choose or deselect this. Uh, and then, now let's talk about complexity for a second, because complexity is its own uh, has its its own uh, frame of reference that I want to talk about. This is the first time we've seen complexity. The images didn't matter with the complexity, but the content here does. And so there are 10 levels to complexity from one to 10. These are, I would say, an approximation. This is not exact. This is not to say if you were teaching a lower division course, you have to choose level seven. Uh, you might try at a couple of different levels to see what gets the results that you need. Uh, what's important to note is the higher levels that you use, uh, the more advanced or more complex the content will be. Whereas if you choose early levels, then you'll have something that is a little much more basic and elementary. So when you're using the complexity, I have to pick the right <laughs> uh, screen to be on. Um, here, you'll see it kind of snaps. So if I go all the way down, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is about where the default is set. I can also go up higher, eight, nine, ten. So I'll keep it to about that that seven. This would be probably a uh, two hundred level course. And then I can also choose the number of modules that I want to have in my course. The default is four. I'll set it to eight. Maybe we'll do a module every two weeks. And then under advanced options, this is where I can choose a different language if I would like to generate content in another language. So I have choices there. Uh, unfortunately, I only really speak English. <laughs> speak a little bit of a few other languages, but not enough to <laughs> generate or do a workshop with those. We'll stick to English and I'll generate again. This time I'll have eight modules instead of four and each module will start with module one, module two, module three. Uh, and we'll wait a moment while those other images generate. I clearly now have eight modules. Now that this has generated, it looks like it may have had an issue with one image. We'll come back to, or two of them. We'll come back and try those again, maybe another time. But it's worth noting that because this is auto-generated content, Blackboard reminds me that it needs to be checked for accuracy and bias. And I would need to select any of these that I want to include in my course. So if I didn't like one of these modules, I could not include it, or um, I could include just one of them, I could include eight of them, uh, I could ask it to only generate one module. If I needed one module on a specific topic, I might put that information here in the description and just get that one module. But when I click to add eight to course, now I will have eight modules already set up for me. Uh, it would take a fair amount of time if you were to create each of these modules manually. Let's see, it's one for the plus, two for create, three to clicks to click learning module. I would need to type the title, the description. I would need to add the image and save it. So there's three clicks just to start creating a module and then the page of information to fill out about a module. and 
in a few minutes, Blackboard will do all of that work for me. And then it's also worth noting, I'm not sure that this image has much to do here. Certainly, I don't like that it has the text at the bottom that I know is going to be inaccurate uh, language. So if I want to change anything about the module that Blackboard created, I can click the three dots and edit, and then I can edit any aspect of this, including choosing a different image or having it generate more alternatives. So while I've accepted these as they were, I don't have to keep them either. I can delete them if I don't want them now that I've created them. I can edit them if I want to make any changes to it. Uh, so we've looked at the images, we've looked at now creating entire modules. I'm going to jump back, sorry for the, the back and forth, but I wanted a, an empty course to be able to show you generating the learning modules. Um, now I want to show you more of those assessment capabilities. So I said that there were three primary capabilities, the way that I could like to categorize them. One is that I can generate test questions. The second is that I can generate prompts for an assignment, a journal, or a discussion. And the third is that I can generate a rubric. So let's start with generating some uh, test questions. I think in this module two, I have a quiz. Here's my what is art quiz. It already had or should have had a number of questions. I guess it doesn't have any questions. We need to add some. So if the page loads, sorry, I'm having an issue right now. There we go. There were the questions. I knew there were questions. I have a number of questions already. I'm going to add questions. So if I click the plus button, I could do it anywhere. I'm going to add them here at the bottom. So instead of any of those other pluses, I'll use this one. And I'm going to ask it to auto generate questions. If you don't have a test in your course, click the plus button, click create, and then in the side panel, choose to create a test that will get you to the same test canvas. And once you have the test canvas, then you'll be able to auto generate questions. Sorry, I keep forgetting that I'm jumping straight to the AI design assistant piece and not the, the Blackboard steps that you need uh, if you are starting from a blank space, if you don't already have that there. So when it's auto-generating questions, this is going to, again, look at the context of your course and generate questions based on what content is there. I can add a description so if I was looking for questions on a specific topic, uh, I could put information here. This description field, by the way, can take a very large amount of text, not indefinite, uh, but I think I heard 2000 characters or so was the limit. So you can fit actually a fair amount of text into this description field, even though it's a very small box, it will continue to, to fill with content. Uh, something else that is new that we didn't see before is I can select a specific course item to use to generate this content. So if I choose select course items, this won't work if you have an empty course, but because I have some content in this course, I can choose anything from this module two on what is art. So I'm gonna pick uh, maybe these three files, these are PDFs that I've uploaded to my course as readings for my students. So I'll select those three to be the context. And so Blackboard will specify these questions from those files uh, as opposed to looking at everything in my course. I can choose specific question types as well. The Inspire Me will give me a different, a smattering of different question types, uh, or I can pick a specific question type. I'll leave it at inspire me. Again, I have the complexity field, so I can choose how 
easy or difficult I want these questions to be. And then I can specify a number of questions from 1 to 10. I'll choose 10. I want to get as many questions as I can to then uh, select from, so I get a broader range of choices. And then again, under advanced options, I could choose a different language for the output. So let's generate these 10 questions again and see if I like any of them and want to include them in my course. Again, this is the hardest part is waiting, <laughs> waiting for it to generate. There we go. So as you can see, I have a selection of different question types from a couple of essay questions. How does art reflect and respond to society? Ooh, that sounds like an interesting question. I'll choose that one. Uh, and notice that I have an example of a correct response here as well. The correct response is visible to you while you're grading. So you can use that to uh, compare a student's response to the correct response that you've provided. It also is visible to students after they have taken the, the test if you enable for them to see correct answers in the feedback options. So this may or may not be visible to students based on the settings that you choose. It is not visible to students while they are taking the test. It may or may not be visible after depending on the, the selections you make in the test options. Uh, and then I can choose a few others. I don't know enough about art history, honestly, to tell you whether any of these questions are correct or incorrect. But if this were for a course that I was usually teaching, I would have that subject knowledge to be able to, to choose. Uh, I don't particularly love true or false questions, so I may skip those, but those both seem like reasonable questions. Matching, I do think you need to be a little careful of because um, sometimes the matching premise that uh, Blackboard has chosen doesn't work. This one I think would work, but I'm not as concerned about matching specific uh, theories with specific art authors. Not the point of my course. We'll skip this one. But it's worth noting that it also created two distractors two options that were just here to be in that list, but were not one of the answer choices, one of the correct answers. So adding a little more complexity to that question design. Um, again, I'm not going to worry about a specific author. I will choose artistic movement with corresponding time period because I think that timeline is important for this course, we'll say. Um, and I'll choose this question eight because while I don't always love true false questions, this one I think prompts some, some more critical thinking. So there we go. I've chosen five out of only eight questions. I had asked for 10, it generated eight. Sometimes this happens based on the speed of the AI response uh, or bandwidth or just because it has kind of run out of ideas for questions, but that's okay. I've got five good ones and I will add those to my course. Those will appear here at the bottom once this page updates. Again, I'm having some bandwidth limitations here that's slowing things down. So there we go. Now I have question 15, 16, 17, and 18 and 19. I can reorder these if I wanted them to be uh, at a different point in the quiz. I can change the point values. I can even come in and edit the question entirely. If I wanted to uh, make more uh, edits to this question. But now I have added those here to my, my quiz. Just a few minutes, added five questions. I mentioned you can also create an assignment prompt or a discussion prompt. So let's try that. Let's create. I'm going to create an assignment. And I'll start with a, a title for this. Let's call this a um, reflection on the impact of art. 
So once I've titled this, I'm going to ask Blackboard to auto generate the assignments. And again, what this will do is based on the context, it will start to generate some examples of assignment prompts. What I want to highlight here in particular is that I can choose the desired cognitive level that I want this assignment to be at. These map to the higher levels of Bloom's taxonomy. So you don't find here, for example, things that are at the, the remember level, the understand level. Um, we're jumping up higher to apply, analyze, evaluate, and create. So the upper four levels of Bloom's cognitive taxonomy. I can choose a specific level or I can use this inspire me and it shows uh, three different cognitive levels to give me prompts. Because it's an assignment prompt, I can only choose one. I can't choose more than one of these at a time, uh, but I can read each of them and decide which one I would like to include for this particular assignment. Um, Let's try I'll just choose the first one, I think. Now I'm going to choose that and add it to the assignment. I can edit this once I've created it. Um, so I'm going to do that by let me just start by adding some paragraphs to make this a little bit easier to read. Um, kind of break this into three sections. So in the assignment prompt, one of the ways that they tried to make this a little AI resistant is by asking students to create either an essay, a photograph, a video, a presentation, or a podcast or a speech. By giving choice, then uh, my students will have to think about the a mode or the modality that they would like to use to create this. And several of those are more difficult for them to use AI to just generate for them, um, which makes us again a little more AI resistant. It also asks them to very specifically consider aesthetic symbolism and techniques in the artwork that they choose and to analyze the way that it has the power to shape perspectives, preconceptions, or social awareness and share a personal experience related to the impact of art on your own life. So again, by trying to be really specific about the student's personal life, that's also creating a little more resistance to students using AI. So now I'm happy with this assignment. I, again, I created a really authentic, really interesting assignment prompt in a matter of minutes. And I wanna generate a rubric for this assignment as well. So I'm going to open the assignment settings and I will jump down to using a grading rubric. When I go to add a grading rubric, I could choose one that's already here. I could create one or I can ask AI to generate one, which is what I'll do. Here we have similar expectations uh, to, or similar settings from some of the other tools, but we also have some new ones. So rubrics in Blackboard can be either a percentage or point-based. This one's going to by default be percentage-based, but if I'd rather see points, I could make that change and regenerate. It also asks me how many columns I would like to see and how many rows. So by columns, those are these levels of, of uh, performance across the top from exceptional, proficient, competent, developing, and then the number of rows. Right now it has four, how well they conveyed their message, how well they analyzed artistic elements, uh, their description of how it shaped perspectives and the personal connection. Uh, these were all elements that were in the uh, assignment prompt. Now, if I am using this just to evaluate my instructions, maybe this tells me that I was missing some information about the format of the assignment or uh, something like that that didn't make it into the rubric. But if I wanted to use this one, I'm going to just continue 
And from here, I can then also edit any element of this, like maybe instead of message conveyance, um, I'm going to uh, choose instead um, uh, coherence of arguments, which is not a very useful way to phrase it, but right now that's all that's coming to me. Um, but I can change the overall weights. This happens to have weighted that overall message higher than it did some of these other levels, so I could modify those. If I didn't like any of these terms, I could change those as well, but for now I'll save. And then I will choose to add that rubric to this assignment. So now when I grade student submissions, I will be grading it against the um, rubric that AI generated for me. I can do the same thing with a discussion or with a, a journal to go through the same steps of creating that, uh, that prompt. The journal and discussion prompts are tweaked a little bit in order to be um, specific to that format. So for example, writing a discussion prompt is going to be very different from writing an assignment prompt in terms of what you're asking students to do. And so the discussion prompts will look a little bit different than those assignment prompts in order to be uh, tuned for creating a, a discussion and prompting that conversation. But the process is very similar. Um, those are, if we come back here to revisit, those are the capabilities that are currently available in the AI Design Assistant. It can recommend images, it can generate new images, it can propose test questions, it can suggest prompts for assignments or discussion in journals, it can generate a rubric as well. Uh, we looked at, and it can generate learning modules overall for our course. We also looked at the context picker that lets us choose specific content of our course in order to uh, generate items based on that content specifically. And we can use that context picker in a number of, not all of, but a number of those design capabilities, such as generating um, the test questions, assignment prompts, uh, etc. You cannot use the context picker for um, some of the others, like I, I don't believe it was there when we were generating learning module images. It uses the learning module as context automatically. I want to stop there while we have a few minutes left to see if there are any questions about the AI design assistant capabilities, how you might use it, um, or any concerns about or questions about AI in general. All right, well, seeing none, I'll, I'll thank you all for joining me today. Know that CIDL is available to provide support um, whenever you need that with teaching, with teaching with technology, and using AI in your teaching is one example of that. The Blackboard Design Assistant here is intended specifically to make it easier for you to use Blackboard. That means its capabilities are uh, limited compared to what you might accomplish with a chat-based AI tool in general, but it is specifically targeted to make those the process of using Blackboard more efficient and more productive for you. So still a lot of great advantages to using that tool. If you have any questions as you use it, please let us know. And if you have any suggestions for other ways that AI might uh, make your work more productive or more effective in Blackboard, please let us know those as well. Blackboard and Anthology are always looking for those recommendations so that they can develop what's, me what's meaningful to you and what will make uh, your life easier, what will make you more effective in teaching your students and will help your students learn more. So thank you so much for joining me today.